The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. And now a special request to boys and girls. If your father and mother don't happen to be listening to This Is Your FBI Tonight, please get them. Tell them that the Equitable Life Assurance Society, the sponsor of this program, is going to make an important announcement to homeowners and to all families that are thinking of buying or building a home. Tell mother and dad they're going to miss something if they don't get the facts on America's finest plan for home ownership. Tonight's FBI file, The Carnival Killing. Day after day, the criminal goes on defying it. And as twice reflected in tonight's case from the files of your FBI, day after day, he is caught up in its inevitability. The inevitability of that ancient truth which disciplines all human conduct and from which there is no exemption. Be sure your sins will find you out. Our story tonight could take place in most any kind of setting you could name. And it could involve persons of most any rank or station in life. But it just so happens that this particular time, it actually took place in a carnival setting. That music, of course, is coming from a merry-go-round somewhere down the midway. And the crowd, just part of the Saturday afternoon throng. Over here to one side, the main money wagon. The attractive girl seated at the open window is the cashier. And the dapper young gent in the plaid suit and the straw hat just walking up to her runs the concession just across the midway. Hi, babe. Hi, Larry. Well, how goes with the ump chase, huh? Oh, kind of slow. Mm, yeah, I got the same complaint. No booze? Not enough. But uh, here's a hundred you can salt away for us. Hey, that ain't bad. Well, if the suckers will start throwing hoops, I ought to take in another yard by shutdown. Keep slugging then, Junior. And pretty soon, babe. You get that ring. You mean the big one? The one we've seen in St. Louis? <laughs> oh, are you kidding? That comes heavy, sweetie. Well, it was your idea. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll keep slugging for it. Here, give me uh, four rolls of quarters, huh? Mm-hmm. Here you are. Uh, see you later, babe. So long, Larry. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Well, we settled the intro real quick, didn't we? Did we? My name's Jack Crawford. What's yours? People who know me call me babe. I'll buy that. You don't know me. I will. <laughs> Fast operator. How long have you been waiting for that ring? You were on the Erie. That's right. Why should the ring interest you? With me, you could have had it by now. Stop, will you? I mean it. Look, that ring has a marriage deal wrapped around it, mister. So, uh, I guess the show is over. Just the first act, babe. What do you mean? Here comes the second act now. Oh, he's seen you talking to me. What's wrong with that? Larry don't like for me to fool around. No kidding. Okay, Mac, quit bothering to help and move along before I... Before you what? Just... Get moving, that's all. You remember me now, don't you? Aren't you? What are you talking about? Babe, there's an old saying. You can't fool all of the people all of the time. Not even with a mustache. Am I right, Mr. Hampton? 
His name ain't Hampton. It's Marlin. Back in Terre Haute, it was Hampton. Larry, what's this all about? Oh, he's got me mixed up, that's all. Say, hey, tell the guy to quit covering, will you? It just so happens that your boyfriend here is a deserter from the Army. What? And on account of that, the FBI is looking for him. And that's they... enough. I figured it would be. Larry. Now, as I was saying, back in Terre Haute, his name was Hampton. We were old pals back there, right, Larry? Well, even though he won't admit it, honey, we were. And because we were pals, I'm going to have to ask him for a little favor. What do you want? I got to get out of circulation for a while. And this looks like a good place to do it. So I'm moving in with you. Now, wait a minute. And remember, before you make any beef, that I'm in a real good spot to blow a whistle. So how about it? Okay. Well, that's the end of the second act. Third act coming up, babe. A few miles away in the St. Louis office of the FBI, agent in charge Phillips has just summoned Special Agent Gaynor to his office. You want to see me, Mr. Phillips? Yes, Gaynor. Well, what's up? Just got a follow-up on that Oklahoma bank robbery yesterday. Really? The agents down there caught two of the men early this morning. Did they talk? Yes. Here's the description of the third man, still at large. Hmm. Has it been checked with Washington? That's Washington's check on it in your hand now. Just came in on the teletype. Oh. The man's name is Jack Crawford. He's already served two years for robbery, too. His home state is Indiana, and he just may be headed for there. Which could bring him through Missouri and maybe even St. Louis. How was he traveling last? In the car they used in the robbery. There's an alarm out on it now. Well, he may abandon that soon. If so, it'll make his trail that much hotter. Well, are we getting a set of fingerprints and a photo on them? In the morning, airmail. Good. You better contact police headquarters here right away and see that they're up to date on the case, and state police, too. Right. Just a minute. How you tonight, babe? Hello there. Got sick of hanging around Larry's trailer. Thought I'd come over and see yours. Uh-huh. You asking me in? Okay, come ahead. Thanks. Hey, it's real nice. All them curtains and stuff, just like home. Thanks. You, uh, through work for the day? No, I just got two hours off. Well, I got two free hours myself. Mind if I sit down? Go ahead. Thanks. Where's Larry? Out clipping the suckers, I guess. <laughs> you know, this county business is quite a touch. Imagine making a living out of people throwing hoops at little kids. Does Larry know you came over here? Why? He ain't gonna like it. That gonna bother you? No. Then, uh, let's not worry about him, hmm? Okay. Tell me something, will you? What? This ring business. You really gonna marry the guy? That's the general idea. Why? Why do most people get married? Well, the book says love. You know, that moonlight and roses stuff. But, uh, I don't seem to catch any of that going on with you. You're doing an awful fast add-up, mister. No. Just watching history repeat itself. What do you mean? I already told you I knew Larry back in Terre Haute. So? So I've seen him in action with other dames. He's one of them nice guy characters. You know, sweetheart, that's all right for squares, but it ain't for you. Am I right? Want some coffee? Am I right? You're right. You know what you really want? Someone like me. I'm going to make that coffee. Wait a minute. Come in. Well? Now, look, sweetheart. Who is it? Me, Larry. Oh. Let him in. But he... Let him in. Hiya, honey. I just got a minute and I thought I'd... What are you doing here, Jack? 
Just dropped in. Babe, has this guy been bothering you? No. No, he, he, he just came here looking for you. He knew where to find me. He came here to see you. Look. He... Remember, I'm your guest. You forget it, you'll be Uncle Sam's guest, so just take it easy. See you later, babe. Phillips speaking. Now, this is Gaynor, Mr. Phillips. Oh, got a lead on Jack Crawford? Yes, the police just found his car. Where? He drove it into a garage here in St. Louis yesterday morning early and apparently abandoned it. That gives him over a 24-hour start on us. I know. Any new auto thefts reported? No. And start checking bus, railroad, and airline terminals and ticket offices. You've got his photo. Yes. If he didn't steal or buy transportation out of here, then he's somewhere in the vicinity. I hope he is. So do I. Keep in touch. Right. <laughs> Larry. I thought you were going to wait for me at the money wagon. I didn't say I would. But you always do. Look, I've got to get back to the trail. Oh, wait, wait a minute, babe. Look, i got to talk to Save you. Save it, will you, Larry? I'm tired. Well, I just wanted to tell you, honey, I, I'm sorry about this afternoon. I didn't mean to blow my top. But that guy coming to see you, finding him there, I just couldn't take you it. You told me all that. Good night, Larry. Uh, let me come in a minute, babe. Uh, I've got to talk this out with you. It's been talked out. Please, huh? J- just for a minute. Okay, come ahead. Don't forget this is getaway night. We've got a long trip ahead of us. I know. Can you turn on the light? Yeah, sure. There we are. Hiya, Larry. Jack. What are you doing here? Waiting for babe. What for? Because I wanted to see her. Look, you get out of here. Get out quick. Now, wait a minute. I think Babe should have something to say about that. You want me to go, hon? Leave her out of this. Look, please, don't start anything. Yeah, the army might not like it. Jack, I got some news for you on that army business. It isn't going to work anymore. No? No. You know why I deserted. You know I went over the hill because my mother was sick. And at the time, I didn't have guts enough to go back. But your moving in on me has changed my mind. This hero talk is for your benefit, honey. No, no, no. It's for something I found again after a long, long time. My self-respect. Oh, this is great. Tell us more, Daddy. I've finished. Now get out. What for? You're going to turn yourself in. There's no need for me to get out. Ever. What do you mean? You tell him, babe. No, Jack, please. Okay, then I'll spill It makes no difference to Babe whether you go through with this patriotic pitch or not. What? She's changed her mind, too. Babe, what's he talking about? Let's not argue anymore tonight, huh? Honey, he might as well know. Well? She's found herself a real guy. Why, you dirty... (coughs) Jack! Jack, darling, did he hurt you? Yeah, he hurt me, but not as bad as this bottle will hurt him. Oh! hit him awful hard. So what? He's bleeding awful bad. Jack, I think he's dead. Now, before the FBI file on the carnival killing resumes, as it will in just a moment, here's that important message for homeowners and home buyers. This week at the Equitable Life Assurance Society, I met a man with one of the biggest smiles I've ever seen in my life. Boy, do I feel good, he grinned, and he waved a paper at me. You see that, he said? That's the mortgage on my house. And today, it's just a piece of paper. That mortgage is all paid off every last cent. I own my home free and clear, and nobody can take it away from me. Well, there's no question about it. One of the red-letter days in any man's life is the day he pays off his mortgage. And that's a day that's not too far off when you buy a house through the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. 
a plan which combines these five advantages. One, the mortgage is canceled, paid off in full if owner dies. Immediately, the widow owns her home free and clear. Two, a special cash fund is built up, and it's always ready to be used if financial emergencies threaten the home. Three, mortgage interest, not at 6%, not at 5%, but at only 4%. Four, liberal allowance to cover title search, lawyers' fees, and other closing costs. No broker's commission or bonus charges. Five, one low monthly payment covers everything and provides free and clear ownership in the time you select. Well, frankly, there is no other plan like this anywhere. The Equitable Society calls it America's finest plan for home ownership. It protects you against the two major hazards of home mortgages, death and hard times. So if you're planning to buy or build a house, or if you now own a home, get complete information on the assured home ownership plan from your Equitable Society representative. That's the Equitable Society. E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Carnival Killing. Sometimes fate inflicts a far severer penalty for a crime than justice would have meted out. Justice would not have demanded the life of the army deserter, the man called Larry Marlin, but fate in the form of a conspiracy by one who found out his crime did take his life. So however harsh the penalty, it confirms the inevitability of that truth. Be sure your sins will find you out. And as for the man who took his life... It is next morning now, and in answer to a call from police headquarters a few minutes ago, Agent in Charge Phillips of the FBI's St. Louis office, accompanied by Special Agent Gaynor, have just entered the city morgue. Here's the body right here, Mr. Phillips. We knew, of course, this couldn't be Jack Crawford. No, that's not Crawford. But since no identification was found on him, we thought we'd better check with you in case he just might be somebody else the FBI was interested in. Glad you did. Took a set of fingerprints for you. Here they are. Thanks. Anything familiar about him to you, Gaynor? No, I, I can't say that there is. Look again, Gaynor. Forget there's a mustache on him. Yes. Yes, there is something kind of familiar about that face, now that you mention it. Lawrence Hampton. Hampton? He's an army deserter. We took his photo out of the files just last week. Oh, sure, I remember. I'm certain it's he. Well, the fingerprints will tell for sure. Where was this body found, officer? Way out near the edge of town. South side, just before daylight. It's a nasty gash on his head. Yes, we thought at first he was a hit-and-run victim. But we checked some fragments of glass. We found the wound. They weren't from headlights. What then? They appear to be pieces from a whiskey bottle. And this was deliberate murder. I'd think so. Any trace of the whiskey bottle near the body? No, and we did a thorough search for it, too. It's my theory that the murder was committed somewhere else, and the body dumped there. Where are his clothes? We have them outside in the locker. Gainer. Yes, sir? Check them over. See what you can find. Right. I'm going to take these prints back to the office and make sure they're Hamptons. You, babe? Yeah. I thought you were working right through. Well, I had to get a relief. I feel awful. What's the matter? Now, what do you think? Look, forget that, will you? Jack, how can I? Nothing's going to happen, baby. When they find the body, they'll think he was hit by a car, that's all. Besides, he's a lamister. The cops won't care how he got it. That part of it don't bother me. Well, what are you feeling so bad about? The way it happened. You're killing him like that. Look, how many times do I have to tell you I did it in self-defense? Besides, it brought us together, didn't it? Yeah. All right. 
Anybody been asking for him? Sure. What'd you tell him? Just like we made it up that he went off on a bender this morning as soon as we hit the lot. Probably wound up in St. Louis. That should cover it good. Jack, let's get out of here. Quit the show? Yeah. Look, honey, if you take a run out, you might as well put an ad in the paper that you've done the job. I'd done it. Sure. So take a pill for your nerves, kid, and go on back to work. Everything's going to turn out fine. Can I come in, Mr. Phillips? Yes, come ahead, Gaynor. How'd you make out? I have plenty to report. Good. Oh, uh, by the way, the victim is definitely Hampton. I checked the prints. And I checked his clothes. What'd you find? Well, nothing much until I got down to his shoes. Well, what about them? Well, I examined the heels. Uh-huh. And they were made of rubber, and yeah. stuck in the indentations were bits of what turned out to be popcorn, peanut shells, and sawdust. That sounds like you've been to the circus. But there aren't any playing in St. Louis. Well, there was a carnival playing quite near where Hampton was found. It closed last night. I see. Now, if the officer's theory was right, if Hampton was killed elsewhere and dumped on the highway... The murder might have been committed on or near the carnival grounds. Yes. And I'm checking to find out where the show moved to, and well, meanwhile, I wondered if I should cooperate with the local police and hop out and go over the grounds with them. Good idea. Get on it right away. Phillips speaking. Now, this is Gaynor, Mr. Phillips. Oh, where are you, Gaynor? I just left the carnival grounds. Any luck? Yes, plenty. We found a number of blood-stained fragments of the bottle that was used in the murder. That was a break. I know. The neck of the bottle was intact, and there appears to be a good set of fingerprints on it. Fine, fine. And we found these fragments where the trailers had been parked, the trailers that the people in the show lived in. I see. Well, that could localize the killing. Yes. Now, has any report come in on where the show moved to? Not yet. It shouldn't be hard to find. Well, I'll bring the section of the bottle with the prints back with me. Good. We can do a quick check in our files before sending them on to Washington. Yes, sir. I'll be right over. Gaynor. Yes, sir? Will you put those prints under the glass again, please? Yes, sir. There's something familiar about that one whorl. Hand me that stack of prints there. All right. I'm just going to play a hunch. Here you are. Now, let me see. That's identical. Those lines check. Little break there. It's the same gainer, the same prints. My hunch was right. Well, who is it? Our elusive friend, Jack Crawford. Crawford? Yes. Really? Well, how did he and Hampton ever get together? Well, that's what we have to find out. You say this bottle was found near where they parked the employees' trailers? That's right. Well, there's a chance Crawford is somehow linked with that show. Well, a report just came in. We know they play where they're playing now. It's only 50 miles from I here. I think we'd better get out there fast. Who is it? Let me in. Come on. What'd you have the door locked for? I ain't looking for company. Thought you were going to keep working. Oh, Jack, I had to quit. A thousand pills wouldn't do me any good. No, no. I mean it. Every time a stranger had come up to the booth, I think it was a cop getting set to ask a few questions. I felt people standing in the crowds looking at me like they were watching my every move. Hey, take it easy, will you? Will you take I, I it easy? I can't go on with this anymore. We've got to get out of here, and right now. What'll we use for dough? I got Larry's money. Some he gave me toward the ring. How far will that get us? I don't care. We've got to go now. Okay, babe. We do it your way. But how do we explain pulling out? Well, I'll say that I'm going to St. Louis to look for Larry. That'll do, I guess. You go get the car. It's parked in the lot. Okay. Here we are, Crawford. Huh? Don't try anything. Jack, who's that? We're special agents of the FBI. What? We want to talk to you both about the murder of Larry Hampton. J. 
Jack Crawford was sentenced to a long term in the penitentiary for the murder of Larry Hampton. His female companion was also sent to prison for her part in the crime. Why do criminals go on defying the inevitability of that inexorable truth? Be sure your sins will find you out. Why do they go on making their futile challenges to the inescapability of justice? Why do they play a game they cannot possibly beat? It's not even a gamble, for a gamble presupposes a chance to win. But justice gives no odds. Justice is unbeatable. Next week, another thrilling case from the files of your FBI. We'll tell you about it in just a moment. But now, let me refresh your memory on the more important features of the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. Remember that the mortgage interest is only 4%. Remember that one low monthly payment covers everything. Remember that if the owner dies, the widow owns the home without any mortgage at all. Yes, the Assured Home Ownership Plan is practically foreclosure-proof. These are only a few of the advantages of the Assured Home Ownership Plan. To get the full story, talk to the Equitable Society representative in your community. Ask him for literature that gives you all details. Look in your local phone book for the name, The Equitable Life Assurance Society, E-Q-U-I, T-A-B-L-E, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Fugitive Horse Player. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner, the author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. And now this is Carl Frank speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Fugitive Horse Player. On this is your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.